Just because you're getting on doesn't mean to say that you should just give up on life and especially on travel. There are still some amazing places you can see that will entrance and enthrall you. So in this series of specials, we're going to take you to seven amazing places that we've visited since we became seniors. Places that we can highly recommend you visit. Welcome to Grey Matters. Welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generations still matter. We still have relevance and still have plenty to offer. This is also the channel that looks at issues that matter to the older generation. And my wife and I have been fortunate enough to visit some amazing countries, most of them in our 50s and 60s. Age really is no barrier to travel. And even if you're showing signs of wear and tear, a little bit of frailty here and there, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. It's pretty easy to cater for those sort of frailties um, in both travel and transport and accommodation. Uh, you've just got to do a little bit of research. The biggest obstacle to travel for the older person is travel insurance. It's a nightmare. It's expensive and in many cases we think it's unfair. You have to declare medical conditions, even if they don't exist anymore. If they're medical procedures you've had, they need to know because they will find any excuse they can not to pay out. We know what these insurance companies are like. And you need to be aware that an annual worldwide multi-trip policy could cost you a four-figure sum. And that is just outrageous. However, there are some ways you can keep those costs down. Uh, there are some bank accounts that offer free travel insurance up to a, uh, an age of around, I think, 65, something like that, after which you have to buy an age extension, which usually is about £60, which is pretty good if you wanted to do lots of regular uh, trips abroad during the year. But you need to declare your, med your medical conditions even for those. Um, another way of of saving a bit of money is rather than taking out an annual policy, just take out a policy for the trips you need. It'll probably work out a lot less than the annual trip. Now we'll be looking at travel insurance in a separate edition of Grey Matters because it can be a minefield and it can be a rip-off. So we will look at those in a future edition. The first two destinations in this travel series is Malaysia and Cambodia. Now we did this trip when I turned 50 and it's an amazing place. It's vibrant, it's active, and it's steeped in history. Some of it quite turbulent, but that just means there's plenty to see. If you visit the Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur, don't miss the Batu Cave Temple, situated in the heart of the limestone cave. Though be aware, there are around 300 steps to climb. So if you have any frailties, you might want to give it a miss. Also worth a visit is the rainforest at Kuala Lumpur. And if your sense of balance is good, you can take a walk along the tree canopy walkway, high above the rainforest. But be aware, in the forest, you will find leeches. Then there's the humidity. It's high all year round, but at its worst in December. If you can, buy a complete hand of mini bananas from a local street vendor, because if you eat those through the day, that kick of energy and that kick of potassium will help to see you through the day. It really works, so do try it. In Cambodia, don't miss the amazing temples. There are hundreds of them, and many of them are over a thousand years old. Two that you really shouldn't miss are the huge temple at Angkor Wat, famed as the location of the last stand of the feared Khmer Rouge. And then there's Ta Prom swallowed up by the jungle and now being slowly reclaimed. It was used as a setting for the Lara Croft movies.
also worth the trip is the amazing floating village on the huge Tonnelly Sap Lake. It's fed by the mighty Mekong River. And the village changes its location based on the seasons and the availability of the fish they harvest. And if you're not squeamish, don't miss the snake temple at Bayan La Paz near Penang. Every inch of this temple is covered in snakes. Some poisonous, some not so much. Just um, be careful. The food in both countries is fantastic. And even for those of you with a, a delicate constitution, it's not too spicy and quite safe to eat. Even the more unusual dishes, such as snake, which I tried and I found to be quite um, quite perfumey, very fragrant, but um, fascinating. Always try and eat something of the local cuisine while you're there. Um, don't just look for the fish and chips, you're going to be missing a treat. Um, and the people in Malaysia and Cambodia are lovely. They're so friendly and very accommodating. Now, we arranged our trips when we were there locally because we didn't want to be rushed, we didn't want to be pushed to a timetable. We wanted to be able to see things at our leisure and chat to local people about what we were seeing. But if you do prefer something more organised, there are always excursions and tours that you can book through your tour operator or through your hotel when you get there. Next stop is Sri Lanka one of my favourite places. The food is amazing and not surprising really when you consider the quantity and quality of the fresh herbs and spices that, that you can get over there. The capital, Colombo, is an assault on the senses with the noise and the hustle and bustle of a very mobile population. But once you get out of the city and head south, the beauty of the island becomes clear. There's so much history in Sri Lanka and therefore lots and lots of places to see. They have an area called the Cultural Triangle and it's well worth doing a tour, but it'll take you three or maybe four days depending on the itinerary you set. Don't book these before you go. Wait till you get there and you're in your hotel. Book yourself a car and a driver. Now tell them where you plan to go all the accommodations will be booked in some amazing hotels. Um, the driver will ensure that you're fed and watered during the day, quite often by visiting relatives who own eateries out there. Uh, admission fees to uh, any of the sites, if, if they're applicable, will be included in the price. And you're not rushed. You can take your time, see what you want on the days you want to see it, three or four days with a private driver and a car, air conditioned, and some amazing sights. Let's take a look at some of them. The Pinwala Elephant Orphanage is a must. It's home to around 100 orphaned and injured elephants, and you're free to wander amongst them, touch them, feed them, and love them. The daily highlight is to see the entire elephant population taken down to the river in the center of town to bathe. Now there's a restaurant overlooking the bathing spot, and it serves the most wonderful curries but you will need to book yourself a table in advance. If you just turn up, you'll probably be towards the back of the restaurant where you won't see much. Uh, try and get yourself a table on the veranda or, or near the windows and you will get a fantastic view of the elephants. Don't miss the rock temple at Dambulla, hewn out of uh, the rock itself. It's an amazing place to visit. not to be missed is the staggering and majestic rock at Sigiria. Sigiria rock towers a thousand feet above the plains. The highlight of this trip is to climb hundreds of steps to the ruined palace at the top. You must be fit and healthy for this one as the heat can be quite exhausting. Also be aware that a lot of the um, steps up 
actually come from a London underground um, and they're basically bolted onto the side of this rock. The views are staggering but you might feel you need some nerves of steel to go up there. The Temple of the Tooth at Kandy is one of the most iconic and holy places in all of Sri Lanka. It houses the sacred tooth relic, uh, supposedly the tooth of Buddha himself. The cultural triangle trip will include a drive up into the mountains to Little England, quintessentially British and home to the famous Ceylon tea plantations. A visit to one of those really is a trip worth taking. Not only will you get to look around the factory, but you'll get a cup of tea. But tea like you probably never tasted before. No milk, no sugar, and utterly delicious and refreshing. So much so that we haven't drunk tea with milk since we came back, and we always try and get salon tea from the supermarkets. The cost of living in Sri Lanka is very cheap. The average wage is about £40 a month. So if you tip someone a quid, nothing to us, but that's like a day's wage to people out there. But it does mean you can self-cater. There are plenty of bungalows that you can rent, many beach-fronted, as, as we did, um, actually belong to an English guy with local people looking after it. We had uh, a meal of a local village uh, with the head of that village, um, and we were treated like royalty. The, the place is wonderful, the people are wonderful, and I can't recommend Sri Lanka highly enough. Do go if you get the chance. Well, have you visited any places that we've mentioned today? If you have, let us know your experiences down below. Maybe your experiences were different to ours. Maybe they were better. Maybe they weren't so good. In the next travel special, we're going to be looking at Hong Kong, um, New Zealand and Beijing. Uh, three places we visited on the one trip. It took us about a month to do so uh, and worth every day that we spent there. We'll tell you all about that in the next Grey Matters travel special. Until then, bye for now.